thinking more seriously about Django means understanding a little bit more about the performance of our Django application. As you might imagine, there are many tools and methods to measure performance of our Django application. And moving into that direction, the Django debug toolbar gives us or provides some useful information to help us start thinking about database or SQL optimizations. Before you fully invest in this tutorial, just to note that I'm going to basically just introduce performance in general terms, if you're not familiar with that. And then essentially, we're just going to go on and install and set up the Django debug toolbar. So unlike some of the other packages that you may have installed, there are a few different steps here that you would need to take, particularly if you're new to Django, this might not be familiar to you. So I'll just take you through those steps. And then I'll just talk in general terms about using the package. So I will be following up this tutorial with a, an example, a concrete example of utilizing the Django debug toolbar to actually perform some optimizations. And that's going to be the next tutorial. So just as a quick recap, Django as a powerful framework makes it easy for us to interact with the database. Here in Django, as an example here, um, we are directly mapping our object oriented models to a database table structure. And by doing so also building the data and table relationships. This level of abstraction that the ORM provides, although it does a great job in general terms, it can cloud our understanding of the performance of our application. So that really establishes the value of a package such as the Django debug toolbar. The Django debug toolbar package provides a panel in our website to show debug information. And we can run this on every single page of our application. The type of information that is going to provide us is system information, what version of Python we're using, for example, and what version of Django. So timing information, so how long potentially the page took to render or to return from the server, and then setting and configurations. So here we can kind of drill down into the actual settings and configuration of our server and of our Django application. So a key area here, uh, the Django debug toolbar provides us SQL performance data. So per page, we can determine how many SQL queries have been fired off to the database. And then also we can then work out how long those queries took. So if you're new to databases and SQL, a query is a request to the database for data. So we make a request and depending on the tables that we have, depending on the amount of data and the connectivity between the tables, we'll depend on how quick it takes or the database takes to actually find the data and return that data to our application to then be rendered onto the user's browser. So sometimes SQL queries or queries uh, can take a long time and it's not until you start to scale up this. So of course, if we run our page uh, individually, that probably won't take too long, even with the biggest SQL query. But of course, once we start scaling our application to multiple users, this is where it becomes quite costly to run lots of SQL queries. Installing the Django toolbar is a fairly straightforward process. If you've already installed other packages here, we're using pip to install Django debug toolbar. So I've got an example project here, just going to go ahead and get this installed. We are going to need to follow the setup guide here. So we're going to need a, an installed app. So we need to go into the core uh, settings. Let's just add this in to your application. And then additionally, we need to also set up the URLs for this. So I'm going to place this in the core. Now there's two settings here. We need to import the toolbar and then the path. So don't forget to do that. So in the core, in my URLs, I'm going to first of all import the debug toolbar. And then I'm just going to copy across the URL. Okay, so that's in place. I think there's just one more step that we need to take. And that's enabling the middleware. So go ahead and just copy this middleware. 
and then let's go into the core and settings again. Let's drop this down. So somewhere in the middle where I don't think there's any requirement in terms of where exactly it needs to go. Let's just double check. It should include the toolbar middleware as early as possible in the list. Okay, so let's uh, let's just try moving up a little bit. Um, so we probably want it after the common middleware and maybe after the CSRF token. Okay, so I'm going to place it after the CSRF token. Now you might receive this error here when you start the server. Name include is not defined. So just go back into your URLs and here, for example, we're including, if you've not done this before, we're including um, this debug toolbar URL. So we need to make sure that after path, we've got the include. So we need to bring that tool in so we can use include and you can see the server is now started. So that was a general setup for any application, but here's where it gets a little bit more tricky because there's some additional information that we need to set up here. So first thing that we need to do is uh, set up the internal IPs. So we're going to need to define this inside of our settings. So we're just going to place this at the bottom of our settings file in the core. So that's the internal IP set. Now we can get rid of these dot dots. Okay. So now we're at a point where we can now define what tools we actually want to show in the toolbar. And here is the kind of default setting here, it looks like, um, to each panel that you want to include in your toolbar. So what we need to do is take this uh, debug toolbar, uh, these parameters here, and that's in the configuration debug toolbar panel. And then we can go ahead and just add that again into our settings. So now we've determined what panels we want to include. If you're like me, it's not going to work because I put the URLs in the wrong place. So I put this inside of an application. So what we're going to need to do is just grab that and put it into our core application. So let's go into the URLs here. So we can get rid of the include there. That's good information for those who are new to Django. Um, so I'm going to put it into the core URLs. There we go. So let's go back to our application. And now on the right hand side, you can see we have this new tab. So you might be thinking, well, actually, this isn't very useful. Uh, well, this is just a, a small scale application here. Once this application starts scaling, um, this is where this type of information really comes into its own. Now, there's not really much, well, it's not really too much here to show you, but it is providing some, uh, literally, the anatomy of this page and the performance measurements of this page. So here I can see if I go into the SQL tab, it's showing me that I'm running three queries on this page potentially. Now, again, because this application is small, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you a more concrete example of where um, it would pick out the fact that I'm running multiple queries or duplicated queries. Um, and that's really then useful for us to then optimize our page. But here you can see that I'm running three queries, how long it's taken to run that. Um, and I can then kind of drill down into the actual SQL query that's actually being utilized. And that will help me determine whether I can produce SQL queries that are a little bit more optimized than one that's being utilized here. Now, these again are very kind of simplistic queries. So there's not really much to change or say about it, but it does start to give you some insights about your application. And like I said, once you start to scale your application, there'll be a lot more kind of diagnostic information here, which you can use to then improve the performance. So to finish off now, you could obviously just run through this yourself, the different tabs, and you'll be able to view what's available there. So at the top here, we have the history. So this is going to be the history of, this is going to be the history of the, pages that you visited on this site, for example, um, in this session. And then we've got the version, not too much information there. So Django Python debug tool gives you the versions of the uh, packages that you're running. And then we have time. So time, there's nothing to click here, uh, but this is the time it's taking to kind of render this page. So 100, 139. So that can kind of gives you a good indication how long the page takes to load. Now here on the local machine, this is probably not very useful information. 
And of course, running this on your server might be more preferable because that kind of then simulates more closely, obviously, what your users are going to experience. Now, going into settings, um, you can see there's some good information here, base directory, uh, session information, cache information, um, some other setup information. So there is some useful information here that's actually going to help us or understand what's going on in the background. And when we start to troubleshoot our application, this can be fairly useful to see what's actually being uh, utilized or the settings that are being configured so that we can determine, determine what the problem is. So headers is another good piece of information or another good area to, to start to understand what the inf what information is actually being sent and received um, from the server, for example. Uh, again, this is a good diagnostic information or can be good diagnostic information uh, and security information that's going to help improve your application. Uh, we've got a request here. So um, we've then information about the request. Uh, it's, the request has obviously gone to this view here. And we can have a look at the arguments and key, keyword arguments if we wanted to, for example. Um, we've got some cookies, information about the cookies and session IDs and so on. And we've got some session data. So here, if you remember, if you're, yeah, I say if you remember, if you're currently doing the e-commerce project, uh, we set up the basket session data. And you can kind of see there's nothing inside of that at the moment. Uh, so that's uh, some good information there. Once we start filling up our our variable, we can actually start to view what's inside of our inside of our cookie there. And that's probably something that we can quickly do in actual fact. Let's have a look. So let's add that to our basket. Let's go back into was it our requests here? Um I'm not too sure if we've got the basket functionality working. I think so. Um so let's just uh, refresh. Let's go back to the request here. So you can now see in my basket I have two items. Um, and the price is, uh, I have one item and that's item number two, sorry, ID number two in the database. I've got quantity one and it's 60 pounds. So you can actually see the data that's currently been stored inside of the session with the value of basket. Of course, this session here, or another session that might you might see is when you've logged in, you can see the session data for that as well. Okay, so SQL we kind of spoke about. There's not much to see there at the moment, but like I said, in the next tutorial, I'll give you some more information. Uh, static files just gives us an idea of what files are actually being attached to this page if we're running multiple includes, etc., or sorry, multiple uh, documents, JavaScript files, etc., uh, images. See what static files are actually being utilized in this page, and this is fairly useful information too, in actual fact, because um, once you start looking at utilizing maybe lots of images, et cetera, we can start thinking about, well, how can we compress those images? How can we reduce the size of them? And that then obviously affects the time of the page loading um, and has other effects down here, the profiling of the page. We can start to kind of drill down into those type of things as well. Okay, so we've got templates. Here's something interesting. We've got the context processes that are running on this page. That's a uh, fairly useful. We can kind of then drill down to that. So. Here, if you remember, oh, I say if I remember again. So here in this application, I've got two context processes that I'm running. One is I've set up for the categories in the dropdown list, and you can see what's being returned from that. And then also uh, the basket at the bottom here, I can also have a look. It's just the, uh, the objects being returned, but it gives me some additional information potentially about what is being returned in my context processes. Okay. So moving down, cache, we've not started to have a look at that yet. We've got some signals. Again, this is kind of some more advanced features that we'll move into at some point. And then at the bottom here, uh, profiling. So we can kind of see how this page is loading from the very top. There we go. So this is kind of useful because it kind of identifies maybe areas which is slowing down the, the page from loading. That's uh, some good information there we could potentially collect. So overall, the Django debug toolbar, I hope you would agree, provides us some really valuable information. And like I said, in the next tutorial, we're going to be utilizing it to run over an optimization example and look to see how we can optimize a certain scenario. So thank you very much for listening. Hopefully it was useful and I'll see you in the next tutorial.